Welcome to Be Your Own Best Coach with JJ. Today, what I want to talk about is playing the long game. We are so used to instant gratification. We want things yesterday. I don't know about you, but I remember a experiment where there were a group of four-year-olds and these four-year-olds had a marshmallow. They were given one marshmallow and they were told that if they wait, they can have this one marshmallow now or wait a few minutes until the person comes back with a second marshmallow and they can have two marshmallows. And it was really interesting because as the person left the room, they've got this one marshmallow and they, they're really wanting to eat this marshmallow. And some of the kids are like licking it or touching it, squashing it. Some of them ate the marshmallow and others waited and then got two marshmallows. Now, this was only in a spate of a few minutes. I think the, the longest was 17 minutes. Um, don't quote me, but I think it's like something like that. So it's a short amount of time that these kids had to wait for this second marshmallow, but a lot of them couldn't wait. They wanted that instant gratification. And if we think about how we live now, we get information instantly. So we're programmed to actually want things very, very quickly. And so it's really important in our business and in our life in regards to goals that we can delay gratification and be able to say, I can play a long game rather than wanting things yesterday. Uh, so that's what we want to talk about today, how we can focus on a long game. So there's six things that I want to talk to you guys about in helping you do that. Number one is it, I'm going to talk to you about is take responsibility. Now, before we have any goals, we need to actually going back to this marshmallow thing before I get to that is I forgot to say that it was interesting after the marshmallow test because the guy that ran the experience, I think it was 14 years later, then got together these kids, which were now adults, and actually looked at the results that they got. And he found that the people that actually delayed had delayed gratification so waited and ate the two marshmallows rather than the one were more successful in lots of areas of their life whether it be their work whether it be their sports so it was a really good good experience or experiment to actually see how these kids at, at actually not only did they do that when they were young they also did that when they were older so if it was instant gratification some of them didn't learn to get out of that and actually have you know uh, a delayed gratification uh, and so a lot of them stayed the same and their results showed that if you had delayed gratification then the results were a lot better so I forgot to mention that so I think that's important so number one I want to talk to you guys about is taking responsibility so taking responsibility for the results in your life right now, for all of it. Uh, and that can be easier said than done because it's so easy for us to blame external events or anything external from us so that we don't have to take responsibility. And we call it like below the line thinking or above the line thinking. And it's so easy for us to blame, you know, blame the government, blame the economy, blame the industry, blame our staff, blame our partner, blame uh, whatever we want to blame outside of us. It's so easy to do that rather than say, I am going to take full responsibility for the results that I have got or haven't got. And so it sounds easy, but it's not. We have to really humble ourselves and be honest with ourselves so that we can say, hey, I'll get, whatever your results are right now, so good, bad, indifferent, if you actually look at the results that you've got, maybe you might look at your finances and you look at them and go, okay, this is a result I've got now. So if you're 
got finances that are really strong and you're happy with that, then that was based on all some great decisions that you made along the way, not just yesterday, but along the way. It could be for 12 months, two years, five years, 10 years, whatever it is. You have taken consistent action to get a great result. And it's the same with other areas of your life. It might be your relationships. It could be your physical body. Again, take responsibility for wherever you're at. If if you're at a stage where you think I'm at the right weight, I'm fit, I'm healthy, well, good on you because you created that result. But if you're overweight and you're unhealthy and you're not fit, then you've got to take some responsibility for that as well. So just be really mindful of not blaming external events and being able to say, hey, I can take responsibility for this. And some of you might be saying, hey, oh, yeah, but you don't understand this happened to me or or this is a condition I've got. I understand that there are there are circumstances that are beyond our control. But most of the time we have a very big influence in our results. So if we can take responsibility for that, then we're already halfway there. So that'd be great. Number two is making sure that we have a clear plan. Now, I remember when I first started my first business, I just didn't know which direction to go. It was really challenging. And so I wasted a lot of time. I wasted a lot of money. And I remember continually saying, if I knew the direction that I had to go, then it would be so much easier. And I made so many costly mistakes. Uh, It cost me, as I said, a lot of time and a lot of money. But if I knew that direction, then it would have been so much easier. Uh, But I, I, you know, it was a challenge. It was, you know, call it a struggle trying to go, oh, I'm trying to go in this direction. Should I go this direction? And it was a lot of effort. And I've said this before in some of my videos, it's like you're rowing a boat and you row and row and row in that direction and you're resilient and you're working hard and you're exhausted, but you keep going and good on you. But if you're actually going in that wrong direction, you're wasting your time. So for us to know what that clear direction is, is so important and have a really clear plan on how you're going to get to the end game that you want to get to. So that's number two, having a clear plan. Number three is speaking it. So, and when I say speaking it, speaking out loud, but also being really mindful of what's playing in your head, just like a record. Now you could have this record playing in your head and that that record could have come from your teacher, your uh, parents, your auntie, your uncle. It could have been, it could have come from you, right? That you're playing this record that's not serving you in regards to the results that you want to get. So this record could be saying, oh, you're never going to be great in business or you're too stupid or you're not great with money or you'll always be overweight because it runs in your family. Whatever that record's playing that's not serving you, then you need to make sure that you scratch that record and you create an empowering record that's going in your head because that record's playing and playing and playing and it is influencing everything you do or don't do in life. So it's just like that that song that gets stuck in your head. You know, if you think of the song, you know, it's a small world after all, you know that song? It's a small world after all, da, 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 da. And you get this in your head and you can't get it out of your head and it just goes in your head and it plays and plays and plays. Well, you have those records that play in your head and you may not even be consciously aware of them and they keep playing. You've got to make sure that the records that are playing in your head are serving you. And not only that, that you speak your goals. Often I will say to learn effectively, there's lots of different strategies to learn and one of them is to teach back which is to teach someone else what you've just learnt. And it's similar with your goals. Being able to speak your goals is so important because you put it out there and you embody that goal and that makes it easier and more, and it helps you get clarity in regards to that goal that you want to achieve. So make sure you speak the goal. So that's number four, three. Number four is making sure that you ground yourself. 
So humble yourself. In business and in life, our results don't do this, right? They don't just continue to go up and it's all happy, chappy and everything's all fine. No, it doesn't work like that. Life doesn't work like that. Business doesn't work like that. It goes like this. It's an up and down and it has to be like that because we need to learn to become the person we need to be for the next step that we want to take. And these challenges that we have in life are opportunities for us to grow. And once we grab those opportunities, it's awesome because then we grow into the person that we're capable of being. Um, so it's about making sure that we capture those growth moments. But that's what life is, right? So it's up and down. It's light and shade. And so it's really important that we ground ourselves, that we regulate our emotions in those times. And I mean the high times and the low times. So when things are going great, so you might be in business and you get an amazing sale, ground yourself, humble yourself and make sure it's not like, ah, you know, I'm getting really excited because the higher you go, the, the, the lower you're going to fall. And you've got to make sure you're regulating your emotions. And the same with if you if things are tough, right? If things are tough and it's really tough, again, ground yourself and, and know that it's ne it's not forever. It will pass. There was a book I read, I think it was Marie Folio wrote it and it was called Everything's Figure Outable and it sticks in my head, like that record, right? Sticks in my head. Everything's figure outable. Everything's figure outable. So when I get a challenge, I hear that little record. Everything's figure outable. And so just remember when those lows happen, humble yourself, ground yourself, and know that things are figure outable. Maybe that's the saying that you want to put in your little record player in your head that might serve you. So ensuring that we ground ourselves and focus on the end game. So that is number four. Number five is ensuring that we take tiny actions. Now, I talked about your results before in regards to maybe it's your sales results, your finances, your relationships, your where your physical body is at at the moment. Rome wasn't built in a day, right? So, and, so, and either were the results that you've got. So you might be looking at these results and going, yay, I'm, I'm really happy with those results. Well, you didn't get it just from working out, say, with, with your body. You didn't get that taut, healthy body by working out once and by eating the right thing once. No, it's all those little tiny actions that you've taken in a period of time to get the results that you have achieved. And it's the same with the results that you don't want. So if your finances aren't great, if your body isn't the weight or as healthy as you want it to be uh, and you're not as fit as you want to be or your relationships aren't as strong as you want to be, it's the result of all of those tiny actions that you have taken not just one day ago, one week ago, but it could be a year, two years, 10 years ago that have all piled up to get the end result that you have today. So again, when you're taking responsibility for that and then saying, okay, I need to tweak something. So it's that 1%. You know, I had a beautiful uh, speaker at my house the other uh, last week. I had my business breakthrough mastery uh, entrepreneurs at my home last week and we had a great speaker which her name's Jessica Douglas who is a three times world champion mountain bike rider and she talked about the one percenters so that one percent that you improve every single day or every single race or every single time that you're doing something in your business or in your fitness or whatever if you're always tweaking and and tweaking at one percent then by the end of the month by the end of six months by the end of one month two years that those little one percenters are really adding up and so those one percenters could be all the behaviors that you take all the action that you take the habits that you create that make the difference and it doesn't have to be the big things. So I, 
I remember going to Tony Robbins and I love Tony Robbins work, but I remember him often saying, take massive action. And that's great. And, and you do need to take massive action sometimes, but, but often it's the little things that add up those consistent habits that you start to create that make the big difference in the end. And it's not so overwhelming. You know, often I think people look at their big end goal and they go, I need to do this now, this big thing. Uh, it's just like if you think about, you know, I've just moved into our new home. And at the moment, because we haven't been in here for very long, we have lots of boxes still in the garage. Now, when I looked at those boxes, it's overwhelming to look at all of these boxes. It's like, where do I start with the boxes? And then I said to myself, you know what? Every single day, I'm going to take one box and that's all I'm going to do. Just one box, one box, one bag, whatever it is, just one. And so I've been doing one most days, right? And so the other day I looked and I thought, there's actually not much left. And it's like, whoa. And it just sort of hit me because I've just been doing one box, one box here, one box there. And as I kept doing it, suddenly it wasn't so overwhelming. And I think sometimes we look at our goals and they look so overwhelming and that stops us from moving forward because it puts us in overwhelm when we can make them into bite-sized pieces, then it's so much more achievable. Uh, and so those tiny little habits that you can create and tiny action steps towards your goal, you'll be very surprised at what the end result is in a week, in the month, in the year of what you can create. So making sure those tiny habits, 1% better every single day uh, and Think about those things that you can do. It could be simple things like read a book every day. Read one chapter of your book every day. One Read one page every day. It could be going to bed at 9.30 every day. It could be getting up at 5 a.m. every day. It could be walking from Monday to Friday for half an hour. It could be 15 minutes. It could be 10 minutes. And then you could gradually increase, increase, increase. Whatever those little tiny habits, once you start to implement them, they will get bigger and bigger and bigger and they will help your, your end result. So tiny actions. And number six is ensuring that you get a mentor or a coach. Because what a mentor and coach, a good mentor and coach that's right for you will do is they'll collapse time. And what does that mean? Is that your coach has often achieved the result that you want to achieve already or they know the actions that you can take to be able to get the results that you need a lot quicker. So if you think about the things that I've talked about, taking responsibility, a coach and mentor will ensure that you're taking responsibility. They'll keep you over the line thinking rather than below the line. Below the line thinking is victim mentality and we're above the line is you're empowering yourself and you're actually taking responsibility. And so your coach or mentor will ensure that you are over the line. They'll also give you a clear plan and work on a clear plan of focus so that you're not rowing in the wrong direction. You're rowing in the right direction. They'll also help you speak your plan. They'll ensure that if there is records playing that's not serving you, that they'll scratch it for you. They'll also help you ground yourself and they'll also help you with your tiny habits and your tiny actions, I'll help you implement that. So a mentor and coach brings that all together for you. So that's really important that you have someone that's going to help and support you to get the results that you want. So in summary, the six steps to make sure that you're playing the long game and how you can do that effectively is number one, Take responsibility, making sure you're above the line thinking and taking responsibility for all the results, not putting it out there and doing the blame game. It's you that's going to get the results. So take responsibility uh, and it's so empowering when you do that. Making sure you have a clear plan so you're not rowing in the wrong direction. Making sure you speak it and those records that are playing in your, in your mind that they're serving you and supporting you making sure that you ground yourself, 
and making sure that those tiny habits that you've got in place. So I would say if you can get five habits, like once you finish listening to this recording today, get five habits, write them down, get a notebook right now and write those five things that you can do, little, little habits that you can implement, that you will say, I am going to do and I promise myself I will do these. And then when you're ready for the next ones that you can stack up, do another five. Make sure that these tiny habits are towards the goal that you want to achieve. And lastly, make sure that you've got a mentor or coach that is going to collapse time for you so that instead of taking possibly five years for you to get those results, ensuring that you get them a lot, lot quicker. So I trust that that has been valuable for you. I love this quote from James Clear, who is the author of Atomic Habits. And I think it's such a powerful quote. And what he says is, every action you take is a vote for the type of person you want to become, wish to become, I should say. So I'll say that again. Every action you take is a vote for the type of person you wish to become. And I think that is a really powerful quote. Thank you so much. I trust that this has been valuable for you. If it has been valuable, make sure that you like my and make sure that you put some comments in regards to uh, this clip. I would love to get any feedback and share it with anyone that you think would find it of valuable. Thank you, guys. Have an awesome week and I will catch you on the next podcast. Thanks so much.